Is Othello a Racist Play? Well, today's debate brings together a literary critic, a historian, and two superlatively accomplished theatrical professionals to tackle that provocative, even iconoclastic question. The play haunts me as a professional, but I also have to admit it disturbs me as a person deeply. It disturbs me as an anti-racist. It also disturbs me as a feminist. As an American, the play troubles me because I'm all too aware of the pernicious ideological misuses or uses of the play. I re resisted the role of Othello for years because it seemed to me that it was problematic in that the assumptions contained in the short story on which the play is based, uh, the conventions and the traditions, both literary and theatrical, um, just reinforced the notion that Shakespeare and Cinthio, the short story writer, were suggesting that black people uh, behave as they do because of their ethnicity. And it seemed to me that the convention of the Moor in Elizabethan England on the stage, whenever a Moor appeared, that usually signaled something menacing or a threat to the uh, social, moral and sexual order of society. So uh, when a genuinely black actor comes to play the role, then it just seemed to me that it was important to be aware of the possible implications of the role um, and uh, resist any attempt to endorse what I thought might be racist assumptions. It is my feeling that the play is not a racist play. However, it does lean very heavily on racism. I think it uses it sometimes very casually and very easily for dramatic effect, um, which, again, it's impossible, in a sense, to second guess the author because he's not here. Uh, <laughs> but there is, a, and there, there I do agree with Hugh's uh, point that, you know, uh, you could have tried a little bit harder. It is almost impossible as a practitioner to have any sense of objectivity, simply because, regardless of what people think or feel, Every night you have to live with this. Every night you have to deliver it truthfully, honestly, and with integrity. I don't think that Iago knows he's in a tragedy. <laughs> I don't think uh, he's a man who is reacting to the fact that his friend has passed him over. What I think has become uh, accepted and what I hope our, uh, our production is, is challenging, that I think over the years there have been very racist interpretations. It seems to me that um, there's racism by commission and racism by omission. And I would, I think my conclusion would be that Othello is racist by omission. And I say this because it seems to me that Shakespeare ultimately isn't that interested in Othello's psychology. I think he, well, the point that he wants to get to quite quickly is the seismic eruptions of emotion, the, the Othello music, his, his great um, speeches. Now, I know, of course, it's a mistake to attribute the views of a character to the author, necessarily. But when Shakespeare has Iago say, these moors are changeable in their wills, and then goes on to demonstrate precisely that, um, then I think it's fair to ask, well, was Shakespeare being a bit of a bigot here? Uh, the question arises also, did, did Shakespeare know any black people? Could he have known? any black people? And the answer is yes, he could have. Then what I began to understand is that English people in Tudor society did not understand what race was. Okay. That was the first thing that I understood. And nobody was saying it. They did not understand race. They had no concept of what we now understand it. Because they would say that the French are a race. The Germans are a race. The Spanish are definitely a race. We then overlay our 21st century ideas of everything that's right. gone before. Fascism, Nazism, um, slavery, and Lynchings. all those different things, including the transatlantic slavery. And then we place it back on the 15th and 16th century where it shouldn't necessarily be. That doesn't mean that there isn't prejudice there. But it, doesn't, it does mean that we don't have the racism that we think is there. But that doesn't mean we can't play it like that. We can play it with issues of race, because we're living in a society in which racism is playing a daily part in every one of our lives. But whether it's in Shakespeare's mind, I extremely doubt it. 
I think there was a lot of energy in the room. There were laughs at appropriate times, uh, and there were a lot of participants. There were hands up. Um, there was a sense of excitement, and uh, the um, speakers, I thought, were phenomenal. We know that there's a context for the way in which we speak. Uh, for me, because of my research, the context is always to let people know that there was an African presence. When Shakespeare was writing his plays, many of them were noble people with positions and power and status. And that these people were part and parcel of English society and have been part and parcel of English society from then until now. And so the appearance of people of colour, people of African and Asian descent, in those plays is not surprising, bearing in mind that particular context. It has clarified some things, certainly in my mind, and I hope in the mind of the audience, you know, that, namely about the... Uh, the development of racist ideology, because uh, in that sense, Shakespeare was not a racist, not by intention, but arguably by effect. The play, in my mind, could still be called racist. I think we, um, we touched on things that are much deeper in resonance, that we need to eventually get to the deeper part. And I think it's very good for a theatrical production to then do that unpicking that we're doing now, when we're looking at context and meaning of context. I think it is, it's very refreshing and exciting that uh, audiences, that fellow artists are engaged not only on the level of entertainment, but also intellectually, because, you know, whether people like it or not, these are the tiny little droplets and seeds that engender uh, a change for the positive in the way that we interact with each other, in the way that we interact with the classics in the way that uh, we communicate and in the way that uh, these plays that have lasted all these years will continue uh, to survive and to thrive.